bad. If we'd been a little earlier, those clouds wouldn't have obscured the top. Hey. How are you doing, young man? It's been a while, hasn't it? Twelve years. I was telling Diane. Yeah. Thank you. My You're son welcome. has decided to put me on all of this social media, so I'm on yeah. YouTube oh. and Instagram and That's Facebook. Fabulous. I guess. TikTok. You know, the trouble with me is I don't ever watch any of that stuff, but you know, somebody's got to do the pruning. <laughs> Easterbrook here. Today we're visiting with Dan Robinson, the owner of Ellen Dan Gardens, and he's going to be showing us around. Show you some trees. Yeah. Yeah, I've got stuff. I've got two of my original trees. And so I've just kind of figured out how to keep them alive. And of course, I live in this benevolent place. <laughs> Your trees are trying to figure out how to keep you alive. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I stay close and, and breathe the good air they produce. That's what I attribute a certain level of my health. Anyhow, so um, let me show you some um, some Alaska yellows. All right. And I should point out for the Chinese fun of it. Chinese elm here on a rock. Yeah, a little, a little Chinese elm. It's probably a 30-year-old tree grown from a root cutting. The whole thing is that if this tree with all of its character and charm, deserves a pot that's this big, right? And that'd be the perfect presentation. It'd be dead in 10 minutes on a hot day if you're not there to water. And the other thing is, no matter how good it looks, it's cute for a lot of people. <laughs> oh, that's really cute. I don't like that word in yeah. the inside. Yeah, and so I said, <laughs> okay, I don't want any of that, so I'm gonna plant it in a rock, and it isn't cute anymore. Uh, now this tree here is probably one of my most favorites right. because I collected it in the mountains of Korea in 1962. Oh, really? So I was drafted in 61, went to Korea, and of course, here I am a tree guy over there, and the mountains were there, and here were these. So that's a thick bark variety, a Korean red pine. It's so well suited, so oh, well harmonized with that stone there. I know it. It's just great. It just. It's amazing. Yeah, the only dereliction is I haven't taken the bark off the bottom dead branch yet. But you know, you gotta understand. I've got. I'm busy doing stuff. Sometimes I can. Sometimes I can understand barking. that. Bonsai I, people have so much free time that. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, an interesting thing to kind of point out, and one of the things that no matter where I go, I always collect a lot of dead wood because I like the dead wood on the trees and I love it. So this is a piece of dead wood from the Florida Keys and it is eroded through a process called sublimation, which is a slow burning of wood under the influence of the sun. It just vaporizes it. So there's confusion about how dead wood can look so elegant when it's found in the wild. People think, well, you know, ice pellets erode it and, and the bugs eat it and all of those things are true, but the main ingredient for wood erosion is sublimation. I so here's, here's a classic example of extreme erosion, sublimation. Half the diameter of that, that shaft right here on this cedar yes. here is gone. But what I do is I'll take a tree like this, and this was the original top on it, right here. So this was... Um, reasonably upright. This is off of Mount Hood. And so I cut the top off when I collected the tree and then I was looking at it and saying, well, I'm gonna kill this top down here and then I carve it and then I ex expose it and let it sublimate. Okay. <laughs> but sublimation is a slow process. <laughs> I just slapped a bunch of wire on that, this, this spring. And, uh, 
And when do you do most of your carving? At this time Anytime. of the year? Anytime. Slow time? Yeah. Anytime? Anytime. Yeah. You still have a lot to work with, a lot to yeah. play with then. Yeah, sure. these are, so there's mountain hemlock, that's yeah. off of Mount Hood. And another yellow cedar there. Now that guy, I'm going to plant him in that, uh, I see. So he has a fabulous, uh, so he's going to go right here. Right. right like that. And then his roots can grow down into that saddle in there. But he's got this wonderful natural, uh, Whoa. uh shari. Yeah. And, uh, Anyhow, I, I, I'm going to drill through and put a, a lag bolt into the butt end of that thing so that that just hangs right out of that rock. And it should look pretty That's nifty. exciting. Great uh, project. Trees and rocks are... Yeah. <laughs> it's just more to go together. <laughs> well, you know, look at the discussion around goddamn it, box. Oh, no. You can't use that. It's got square corners. No, you got to have rounded legs. No, you, Oh, that's the wrong color. That's the wrong shape. Put it in a rock, there's no dispute. <laughs> Just, ooh, look at that. We gotta have this moss that just kinda <laughs> takes care of some of my maples for me. It just, so here's a question, how much of every week, for how long did you spend simply searching and collecting material? Because you've got a huge amount of material in here. Oh yeah. It didn't just find its way here yeah, right Yeah, these are bald cypress trees from Florida. Yeah. Anyhow, I, um, I just, you know, I worked one day and I was off too. You know, I was a fireman. Uh -huh. And if you take one shift off, you got five days. And with that income, I was still doing landscaping, but I've just always been busy. You know, the whole thing is stay busy. So you, so you did a lot of this during your working life, you oh, yeah. in your free time. Yeah. Okay. And now, 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 this dead stump, it was here. No, I brought it in. You brought it in? Yeah, same thing with that one. See, this is an old garbage dump, so this is just a landfill. So I you brought, brought in, I brought in 35,000 yards of dirt to build the garden. Died down, then this branch grew, and in 400 years, grew gnarly. Yeah. Well, I grafted chimpaku. Okay. Yeah. That's got chimpaku. And the one behind you is the ancient tree in the garden. And then it added a 14 inch radius and 141 years for the radial inch on an actual counter. So this was the original top. Yes. And it comes, it starts to curve, comes over to here. These were roots. This came out of a crack this much in the Seminole Mountains of solid rock, crack this big. And when I found it, the tree had tipped over because this much rock had eroded away over the life of the tree and it had come to the bottom of the crack, and so the tree tipped over, it didn't die. But when it tipped over, two little tips then turned dramatically and grew towards the light, right? Phototropism, that's the bend in the trunk up there. Right. So I found this thing, it was laying down, and all the growth was coming this way. And there were two of those, and I cut one of them off and carved it, and counted it, and got the 141 years per radial inch, and the tree had tipped over, by counting that, 153 years ago. Anyhow, so to have roots here means the seed had to have sprouted here, because what happens is the seed sprouts and it goes to where it's safe, and then it lateralizes, which means the rock had to have been to here. And this is an area where there's less than 12 inches of rainfall a year, and most of it falls in snow. And you know what happens to snow in cold country, it sublimates. Right? It vaporizes. So what happened to the rock? I have no idea, but the tree, none of the trees are windswept. And so maybe stone supplements. <laughs> I have the local club come in and help me prune the pines and, and during July, so they all... You know, and, and you cut all the candles, yeah, not just, just the take, strong ones. Yeah, you take do the all. weak ones. Every, all. Every that, one. That's Camorra's theory also. Well, you know, the, the, the thing, thing about it here is, what I found, 
back in Japan, we would leave the uh, the, we would leave the big ones, cut the oh. weak ones first. Yeah. So they'd get Throw a head start. Yeah. But with the the climate as it is, the new buds would appear after candle cutting within a week. In a week, you would see the juicy yeah. little green buds form already, right? Wow. So that timeline made a difference. Well, here with our cold summer nights. It might be a month. Oh, it's a slow or thing. Five yeah. weeks before you see. I'll do it. On the day. I'll so, so what happens is, the buds that are so small you don't even see them when you cut your candles. Yeah. Then they. They take off they, and then they got four inch needles. Yeah. They bring them along. Yeah. So like a, yeah. See, this was pruned on the 9th of July. This guy here. And so that's. Those are too long. Whereas that one back there was the end of July. And they were that much right. shorter. Right. And so it just makes a lot of difference. What is it? This was your first phone call. Way back in 1957. It used to be, it used to have a tree that that went all the way out. But it slowly died off over the years. And now it became have, a cascade. Now, well, that's a, as it gets old, it goes into this tumbling posture. Yeah, well. <laughs> so, there we go. Guys my age are having to deal with that. I know. That's what I'm saying. It's just yeah. the gravity of life yes. pulls you down. Going down. Wow. So one of the things that I that I do that's kind of special is I never repot my trees. Never do it. It kills trees, just don't do it. And and tell me a good reason to do it. In nature it doesn't happen. And I find stunted trees growing in a crack in the rock and they were never happy, but they look fabulous. And so if you want vitality, figure out how to root prune and not kill it, because you shorten the roots, you get this. But I don't want this on any of my trees. I want this. And so they never get repotted. And I know it's really, um, wow, that's kind of deep and daring in the face of everything. But that's just the way I do it. And so I'm kind of living proof that you can go at least for 65 years and not repot your trees. <laughs> And, and everything's gonna work, and I still got my original ones. I've got, I've got a, one at home that's a little bit older than this one that I started with. And they all get miracle Grow, except for the mountain hemlocks. So every plant in here gets it, you know? And they all get happy with it. And I do it until about mid-July, starting maybe in April or something when growth kind of you know, visually starts happening. And try to do it every couple of weeks. And it's a hot mix, but my soil is that friable stuff and it just goes right out. So it's a, it's an hour long drink, right? And then it's gone. So nothing cumulative. Look at the barbie on that. Very, 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 very. <laughs> what a great Navari, and it looks like something you just plucked out of Ritsuran Garden, you know, in Takamatsu, you know, just yeah. pulled it out and brought and I, it here. I carved, a, I carved a redwood stand for it and that it hides it. half of the thickness of the pot, so it, it sits down into the stand, I see. so you don't see quite so much pot. I'd like to have it in a, in a thing about this deep, you know, about four inches, not six, just because it's a bulky. But it's happy in there. Yeah, so. the, the balance is good, I think. I don't know. Great. Well, that's that, cor it's that coral that goes on. That's why I planted on a lava rocks slab. Yeah. Then there'll be no dispute. Well, I've learned a lot today with you. In fact, and thank you so much for... Oh, for teaching me all of this. Really, you learn so much I'm every just time. kind of an old part, you know? No, you're, you're like a, a Bible, <laughs> a fount of knowledge, Dad. Yeah, thank no, you. No, thank you so much. <laughs>